How's everybody doing this evening? You doing well this evening? Well, welcome out to, to our first prayer conference. Amen. Are you excited to be here tonight? Amen. We're expecting great things to happen over the next several days, and I believe that God is going to explode something on the inside of us, not just as individuals, but as a church body. You know, before I welcome John and Sharon to come up, first I want to just to kind of remind you what the Lord spoke to our hearts and what the Lord ministered us back in uh, the end of March last year, just praying over the future of the church and where the church is going. And the Lord spoke this to me. He said, Justin, there's some great things that are happening. He said, but in order to go to the next level, he said, we need to come up. And he didn't say prayer. He said corporate prayer. He said corporate prayer. And so it was just a divine appointment at the end of our PC uh, meeting that we had that we, that we uh, minister to those that are um, part of our missions uh, organization. You know, just sitting down in, in the Savelles, at the Savelles house and just talking with the Medixons, it was just the Holy Spirit took over and it was kind of like what the Lord placed in my heart and it kind of just, this, this tonight was birth. And, and so we know I uh, had an opportunity to go there in September and what a great time we had. And so we're excited about tonight. Amen. So before, without any further ado, Pastor John and Sharon, give them a Crowley, Texas welcome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so good to have them with us. And it's also so, so good to have Dr. Savell and Miss Carolyn with us as well. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us. And tell you, this is, there's something happening in the spirit. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, the enemy doesn't want, want this week to happen. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you know, it, God's plan will be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quiet and I'm going to let them take over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, hello. <laughs> it's good to see you all. Uh, just wanted to introduce my wife to you. We know her as Pastor Sharon. And uh, we're going to do some immediate praying pretty much right off the bat. And, and so uh, I wanted to introduce her to you so that when we get her up here, that you, you know what it's all about. She has just greet the people. Hello, family. We're from Heritage of Faith in South Africa, and we are right at home here. I want you to know, because we know how loved we are by Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, and Joe and Joyce have loved us for a long time, and Justin and Pastor Justin and Annette. We know how loved we are here, so... We're making ourselves right at home, so it will be wonderful if you all that don't know us so well would just be at home with us here tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'll keep it down. Thank you, baby. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think I've got to switch it on here. Am I on? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, first of all, uh, I have to say thank you to Pastor Justin and Annette for inviting us and for allowing us to come and minister at this conference in this church. Uh, as Sharon said, we are at home. We are family. We've been family for nearly 20 years. You're just a few months older than we are as a church. So early next year, we will celebrate 20 years as being Heritage of Faith Church in South Africa. So praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. And uh, what a great joy for me personally to be able to minister with uh, my spiritual father and leader in the faith sitting in the front row, Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn. What a joy to have you with us. Thank you, sir. It's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, we have a whole contingent of South Africans that have arrived with me. <laughs> so will all the South Africans stand, please? Thank you. Of course, you know, um, my thanks in an evening like this would not com be complete if I didn't thank Joe and Joyce for being 
covenant friends and partners and, and just being able to integrate with Jerry Savelle Ministries through them over many years. We don't just, we don't, we're not just part of them in terms of an organizational structure. We're part of them and everybody, people to people, brother to brother. And it's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. These things are, these things are important because uh, as believers, and, and I, as I start the evening, this, uh, this, the message this evening, it, it seems a little, uh, a little basic for me to start the way I'm starting, considering that I'm, I am ministering to a faith church and I'm ministering in the church that, that uh, my spiritual leader is, is the founder of and indeed oversees me spiritually. And, uh, but I have to start off somewhat in pr- to teach on prayer by talking about words. <laughs> because, because prayer without proper words is not really something that you want to do that's relevant. So right off the bat, I have to say that there are a lot of people that pray, and there's a lot of people that don't pray effectively. They don't pray and get results. And so because they don't get results, they don't pray effectively, they don't pray with power, they stop praying. And so they tend to move from being spiritual and from being something that, someone that can change things and affect things spiritually to people that just drift as Christians and live in a realm of reality and reason and live without power and without the life of God in them. And so it's been our experience that prayer is one of those things that the devil wants to stop most in a church because if you've got people that understand the power of words and the words that they speak, then... Uh, they become very useful tools in the hands of God and in the church at large. And so certainly we as Heritage of Faith South Africa, we have endeavored and we have applied ourselves to building a house of prayer. Since 2008, we were at a, at a crossroads in our ministry and, uh, and I just speak out of testimony for us and... Um, and there was this whole concept of home churches, home cells, G12, whatever you want to call it, lots of things going around the globe in terms of starting home churches. And as I was seeking the Lord about whether this was relevant to us as a ministry or not, he began to just speak to me and say, I want you to build a house of prayer. So whatever you do, don't start home groups, start home prayer meetings. So if people want to meet in homes, have them pray. And so we began to structure a prayer connect system where everybody would come together during the week and pray. So if you're in a large city, as we have a church in Johannesburg that's in a large city, obviously people live in quite large distances from the church. So it became relevant to have prayer meetings in homes, and that's how people would connect. And then we have a church in Whitbank, and the church in Whitbank, because there's, it's not such a big city, people all come to the church and we pray in the church during the week. The foundation that I'm going to start with you tonight is a foundation of me. I have a prayer life. This is important. It's important because when we start to teach on corporate prayer, and that means all of us praying together, and I'm going to ask you to stay with us because this conference is called Prayer for Explosive Change, and if you learn how to pray corporately, it changes everything. And I'll make a very quick reference to you that when Jesus left the earth, he told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait until the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they were all gathered together in one accord. And because they were in one accord, in one place, in one accord, the Holy Spirit came upon them and then they began to speak in other tongues because of their unity. They began to speak with power. They began to 
release power and thousands of people got saved and the word of God spread mightily and, it, and the church grew daily because of what happened. Yes. So there is explosive power in prayer. But there is a, there is a need to have a prayer, a prayer that is a church-based prayer. And we have learned over some 12 years or so what not to do in prayer, in a corporate prayer meeting. And so uh, we do not stand here and proclaim a doctrine of prayer. We proclaim a way that we have learned to pray, that people come to prayer because they see the power and the results of what happens in our prayer meetings. And so because of the way we structured and we have learned from many people, we have learned from people like Charles Finney, Smith Wigglesworth. We've m learned from people like uh, Dr. David or Paul Yonggi Cho. Uh, we've learned from people like Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen, Brother Jerry. We have learned and taken parts of what the Lord has revealed to us. And we've put it together in a way that is going to be useful to you when we come to corporate prayer. But in order for me to teach you about corporate prayer, I must start with saying, I have a prayer life. Yeah. Pastor Sharon has a prayer life. That's important because if you have a prayer life, then you are wanting to come to corporate prayer and you will be able to engage in a corporate prayer because you are practicing prayer. Yes. If you don't practice prayer personally, then it's more difficult, for not impossible, but it's more difficult for you to practice prayer corporately. So it's important that you have a personal prayer life. In my personal prayer life, there are many things that I, I, I pray for. Um, I'm going to just read a passage of Scripture to you that is something that, that I pray. I'm letting you into a window, a window of my life with God here. So this is something that I pray. It's a Scripture I pray because I find that there are things that I need to continually realign myself spiritually so I go to Galatians chapter 6, and I'm going to read from verse 6 in the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. Those who are taught the Word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. So when I'm praying, this is a part of my prayer. That those, as I am taught the Word of God, I share all good things with my teachers. So this has been something that has impacted my life because as I pray this prayer, God has instructed me over the last number of years to do things that Brother Jerry has graciously allowed me to do and be part of his ministry and be part of you all. And it comes from this scripture. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. So my declaration is, Father, you have saved me from my sinful nature. Therefore, I do not harvest anything from that sinful nature because I submit myself to the Spirit of God. I am not misled. I know what I am harvesting. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. Sometimes when you're in the ministry, you know, the enemy will come against you. And so you go and say, hey, I don't care what the pressure is. I'm not getting tired of doing good. I'm going to keep focused on doing good. I'm going to keep doing good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And so I've learned this from Brother Jerry long time. Don't quit. Don't give up. So if the harvest is not there yet, it doesn't mislead me into giving up what my harvest is coming. I'm not going to be misled by going into my natural man and thinking I can solve that. I am going to stay spiritual 
And if I'm not misled and I stay spiritual, that abundant harvest is coming my way. I must stay steady. I must stay strong. It comes coming. It's on its way. This is my personal confession, which if I don't put this in my spirit, I would be tempted to go back to my natural man that wants to tell me, mm, when's that harvest going to come? Really? Really? You think God's going to get them through for you? That same devil that lies to you lies to me. It's the same devil. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of, God, of faith. And so, Father, I thank you for opportunities that allow me to do good to people, to do good to the family of faith, that allow me to be generous, to be kind, to be watchful so that I can be doing good to somebody on a daily basis because as I'm being good, then my harvest comes back to me. Amen. As someone who, has, who ministers a lot in the pulpit and ministers publicly, uh, you have to stay focused to be able to give out personally, one-on-one, -on -one, to the person at the teller, to the person at the gas station, to the person wherever you are, to be able to be good to someone. Just kind to someone. Just do something good for someone. This is a personal confession to keep me focused. And so if you, if you hold on with me a little bit, you'll understand why I'm going about it this way. So if I have this kind of prayer time, I can have this kind of prayer time when I'm walking in the house, when I'm sitting on my chair. I have a, I have a, I have a place in, in Whitbank, in my house, where I have a chair. And most mornings, I am able to open the windows and I look over a beautiful body of water and I can watch the sun rise. And I sit there, and I, that is my time that I have with, with God. It's not, I don't have it with Pastor Sharon. She has her own time, and she wants a different experience. She wants to close the curtains, switch on lights, and she wants to not be distracted. I love to have the windows open. I love to see the sun come up, and I love to praise God and thank Him and give Him glory and honor for what He's doing. We are different people. So we connect with God differently. Yes. Pastor Sharon, will you please come up and come and do some personal prayer for a minute? You understand I've already prayed. Yes. This is a, we're already in prayer meeting. Yes. You can say amen, amen. And therefore you are in agreement with my prayer. Yes. I'm not teaching, I'm praying. Yes, we are very different prayers. Because we are very different people and we celebrate our difference. I love that he's different to me. You know, I don't try to want him to have the same kind of prayer life as I, I'm having. And he's not wanting me to have the same kind of, because I'm up in the morning and it's dark. And I'm out of bed and I'm out into my prayer chair, into my own prayer time. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm up long before the sun comes up. <laughs> so, you know, and that's just been my way with God uh, for decades now. It's my body clock just, and I wake up early in the morning, and I've got my file, and everybody that knows me knows this file by now. It's called my daily disciple file, and I get going with God immediately when I'm up, and I'm in my preachy, I'm like... Can I just say this? I yes. don't have a file. No. <laughs> I have an iPad. Yes. All my files are on my iPad. But I will tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to get this iPad now. <laughs> Seeing as you bring it up. Because <laughs> it's also part yes. of my prayer time. Yeah, especially that right. message you, you right. ministered yeah. about a month ago, you know. Right. So... I've got it on my iPad. It's part of my pre time, but I'm going to have to be quick here because I'm long with God and, I'm, and I love it, you know, and I can't wait in the morning to, to be with Him. So, what I do is I get into His presence immediately. I say to Him, Into your bright presence I come and into your arms I run. Father, you show me your glory right now in this pre time I'm having with you. You're showing your goodness, your manifest presence right here, right now. And by that time, I've already got my tissues out. Because the tears just squirt out when his presence comes. Is, 
he's there immediately and I'm praising him and I'm rejoicing and I'm opening my daily disciple file and I'm speaking and my first confession is, I thank you for narrative energy that I have now, Father. I have narrative energy and I rejoice and my heart exults and triumphs. I've got my favorite things that I wrote out here. My horn is strength and my strength is lifted up in you. My mouth is no longer silent. It is opened wide over my enemies. I rejoice in your salvation. I've got rejoicing, praising scriptures. And sometimes even halfway through these scriptures, I'm getting quite drunk in the spirit with God. And I'm, I rejoice in your words like one who finds great treasure and great spoil. My tongue sings praise for the fulfillment of your words this morning, Lord. And I've got scriptures like this that I speak. I anticipate In the morning, you hear my voice, Lord. In the morning, I prepare a prayer and a sacrifice for you. Joy comes this morning for me. Joy comes in the morning. You, God, will help me right early in the morning at the dawn of the morning. It's how I speak to God, just exactly how I'm speaking now. And by by, by, by then, my praise and my spirit life is activated within a minute. There it goes. There goes my spirit life is activated immediately. God will help me right early in the morning. In the morning, you will hear my voice. And I anticipate the dawning of the morning. I've got all these morning scriptures. I'm telling you, people must not tell me that they am not a morning person. You can become a morning person with the word of God. Hallelujah. Unless you're doing some shift work. And my eyes anticipate the night watches and I'm awake before the cry of the watchman that I may meditate on your word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then I'm going, oh, I'm giving you thanks in the spirit, Lord. Yes. Yeah. My prayer room is far away from Pastor John because I'm telling you I'd wake him up. Yes, so I don't know so much about a quiet time. sobre, shembro ekro ando raska do dentu. Then it comes to time where I'm speaking your word, and this is where I am right now. I just have got such a jump start. I hear words. I thank you, Father, for marvels and wonders and extraordinary manifestations for my day today, Lord, such as I've never been, been seen in the earth, Father. And I thank you, Father. I'm already walking through the open, the new door. I'm already walking through the new door. If you gave our spiritual leader a jump start on this, I've got a jump start. Oh, my, I didn't bring. I'll bring it tomorrow. I got a psalm already about the, the new door. And I say this, I thank you that you are opening a new door and you're causing your faithful ones to experience supernatural increase like never before. Father, Father, in 2020, you're opening a new door. I've not been through before. I've never entered before. And I keep this in my mind and I meditate on this. I got this, all my confessions out of Brother Jerry's message. I do that. Every Sunday, I get confessions out of every message and I put it in my spirit quickly. I put it in my spirit and in my heart quickly so that it can grow because I believe it's incorruptible seed. And I say, I listen to you, Holy Spirit. I'm asking you about this, Holy Spirit, because that's what Brother Jerry said. That's my seed I'm sowing now. I speak this new door in the spirit. I speak it in the spirit. I don't even know what it's going to look like for me, but it's new. I've never seen it before. I speak it. Sebreke, ambroba. For me, what it's going to look like for me, the things you're going to reveal to me, isabro oshomako, me. For me, new for me, Lord. I don't limit you by my own thinking, by my own ability. I don't limit you by the way you've done it in the past. This is a new door, a new door for me. Glory to God. Woo! Sheme! Yeah! Sasana. Osha. That's personal prayer for me. To carry on? No, no, you stay here. Because I do. No, 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 you stay here. Okay, I'll stay here. Just stay here. Just stay here. I don't pray like that. So, I don't pray like that because that's not my personality to jump out of bed and start shouting like that. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. Don't underestimate my time with God just because I don't do that. Yeah, exactly. And she's learned over all of the years that I'm deeply in tune with God and I'm praying words out of my mouth, yes. but I'm not crying, squirting tears. <laughs> well. So, so now, now listen, we're being real here yeah. because exactly. this is often a, a, 
a, a contact point in personal prayer time where one prayer is very active, one prayer is very loud, one prayer is very vocal, one prayer is very structured, someone else is unstructured, someone else is more fluid, someone else is more yes. uh, 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 responsive in a different way. That doesn't make one prayer life better, stronger, more powerful exactly. than another prayer exactly. life. Now it's my turn to preach. Hallelujah. Glory. I have, my own, I have my own things with God. Brother Jerry's words of marvels and wonders and, and, the, and the extraordinary things of God, the greatness of our God being manifested to us is coming to pass every day in my life, every day this whole year. When I heard his first message about the open door, Sharon, I got on it. We got a jump start. We're looking for the open door already. The new door. I, yeah, the new door. You're right, baby. The new, the new door. door. So, so for, for us, we are, we are um, we're active in what's now, what's in the spirit, and what we are declaring. So, th there's something that Sharon and I do almost every day, together. Yeah. So, when I was here last year, the Lord gave me an instruction to sow a seed into Brother Jerry's ministry for seven areas of our ministry and life that I shared with him. I'm not going to share it with you tonight, but it was something that God instructed me to do. And we, we, uh, we strike, it's called striking the ground. Yeah. So what we do is we get together and we yes. agree that these seven areas, we want God to move on them. Yes. So now we are coming together in agreement. Yes. We are in unity in agreement because we have scriptures, we have a structure, we have a direction that we That's want right. God to move on for us. Yes. Then I don't pray when I'm praying with him in the prayer of agreement like I pray personally with God. Because the Bible says when you come together, consider one another. Now, I'm not going off on my own tangents. When I'm alone with God, I can go off on my own, me and God. We can go off any tangent. We want to go together. God will meet you where you're at in the morning in your personal time, where you want to go with him. He'll go with, where, if he wants to go somewhere, you go with him. But when I'm getting into agreement with him, I'm considering him now. Yeah. And I consider her. That's right. And sometimes I see that as we're praying, she's got to flow like she flowed right now. She's got to flow in the spirit, and I've got to access that. Now, my calm, natural self, man, has got to go on pause. This is an active choice of my will to put my own natural man, way that I work with God, on pause. And I jump into the flow of the Spirit with her of agreement. because we are in the power of human. And I recognize that the power, the flow of the Holy Spirit yeah. in our conversation, in our agreement, mm -hmm. is with her. Now, it doesn't help for me to sit on the chair and watch her perform. Because no. now I'm not really in agreement with her. Right? So when she's got this flow on her, I jump in. Yes. And we sometimes jump up out of the chairs. And jump And around. we jump around in the kitchen, our in our dining room, our lounge. And we jump around and run around and we go That's crazy. Right. We do. We shout and praise. And, and praise. We do things. Because sometimes the Spirit of God comes upon us in our home it's when we pray like this. Not, and it's time to praise and it's time pray. to thanks pray and it's time praise. to give uh, a joyful, rejoicing dance. Yes. Hallelujah. So we do that. We do that. And we move. <laughs> we don't sit still. We move. Hallelujah. We move. Glory so, to God. So one of the things that we sowed, we sowed seed into is that God would activate in our lives, and I've got a scripture in 1 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 9. I'm not going to read it to you, but it's a, a scripture that the Lord gave me about what God wants for us in the future. I've also got scriptures from the Old Testament in Deuteronomy about living in houses that you didn't build, eating from vineyards that you didn't plant, drinking from wells that you didn't dig. And so, I've, so we've sowed seed into one of the arrows that we struck was that God would give us churches church buildings, God would give us land, God would give us houses, God would give us opportunities in the whole of Africa and the world. Yeah. Right. And then we call it in. And so we call it in. The power of agreement. And we just say, we thank you, Father, thank that you, you are Father. delivering to us yes, Lord. churches, buildings, houses, 
and lands, lands Lord. and all manner of properties that we need to further the kingdom of God and yes, the gospel of we God. Call it, Father. We call it into we call our hands. It in our we call hands, it into Lord. our hands, yes, debt free, Lord. paid for, no yes. money owed on it. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, that it comes to us and that we can have things that we need for the gospel. Yes, in Jesus' name. And so, things come to us, yes. debt free, paid for, no notes on it. It's coming into action. It has. I'm not going to give you all the testimonies because I'm not ready to share some of those testimonies yet because, uh, you know, sometimes people just are not ready to hear them. We're not ready to share them yet. But things have come into our hands that are paid for. Paid for. Debt free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Churches, lands, houses, yes, buildings. Yes, yes. In the last, since I came and sowed the seed into Brother Jerry's ministry and life, in November last year, we have had an explosion. Yes. One of the areas that we have been agreeing on, Pastor Sharon and I, is we have scriptures here from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. We, we agreed that we would have an explosion in education discipling the body of Christ. That's a part of Brother Jerry's mandate. That's a part of my mandate. Yes. So we want to see an increase and an explosion and a growth in, in Bible schools, Bible schools, yes. discipleship training yes. all over Africa, all over the world. Yes. Prayer schools. Hallelujah. So, so, when we, so when we started our Bible school in South Africa, we have a, a different Bible school program, but when we started it, the very first year we started it was 2004, and we've had more numbers for the first time in 2019 than we had in 2004. We have been, we have, but we have been consistent for all these years, and so we've graduated about nine and a half thousand people from the school. But we believe in God that this is going to go to a whole new level, a whole new level of growth. And it has already started this year. New schools opening, new people coming, increase in numbers. It already started this year. We are having the highest number intake and, in, intake and people graduating, yeah. I think, that we've ever had, Pastor Christie, ever. ever in the history of our school. Because we sow the seed and under the instruction of God and, and we, we get, get into, into agreement, the power of agreement almost every day. Almost every day. If not every day, then definitely every other day. But we're consistent. We're consistent. Well, we call. And, well, we can carry on. Yeah. And, and I think we're, we're done yeah. with this part of it. We're done with this part of it. Hallelujah. You get something out of this already? Yes. Thank you, babe. Hallelujah. Corporate prayer. I want to just go to the next thing uh, that we do is is we pray for our nation. And uh, uh, we have a we have a, a powerful prayer structure that we do in corporate prayer where we pray for our nation. And we have prayers that we pray for our nation that are changing our nation. And I, we are going to do more of this in the next couple of days. And I don't want to get stuck here for the moment. Although I'm very aware of crossroads in the USA and the political things going on right now. And so that's why I don't want to stop here. When, when we get to pray for the nation, we, will, we want to have already taught you some things about corporate prayer before we get there. All right, are you with me? Yes. So, but we have it in order according to the book of Timothy. First, we pray for our leaders that are the, the nation. Then we pray for our spiritual leaders, those who are in authority over us. Okay? So, we have that structure. Um, we pray for Brother Jerry every week. Almost every day, we pray for Brother Jerry. And Miss Carolyn... And the people that are around them, 
We carry them in prayer. We pray many things for them. Father, we lift up Brother Jerry now in prayer to you. We thank you for making, taking care of all of the personal aspects of his life. We declare that he is blessed in his marriage and blessed in his family. We pray, Father, that he's blessed in his children, his children, and with his grandchildren. We thank you for all of the revelations that must come to him from you at this time, that the word from him will speed on, it, on in triumph, even as it has done amongst us. We pray that he may be delivered from wicked and evil men. No weapon formed against him by such will prosper. We ask and pray that you may open a door for him for the word. We've been praying for this, Brother Jerry, already, long time. When you came to South Africa with Brother Jerry, you had a word. And the word that you had was that God was going to take you to a new people, you know. And since that time, we've been praying for, for that. It's happening. It's happening. Yes, sir. And uh, we ask and pray that you may open a door for him, for the word, that he may speak it clearly and boldly as he unfolds it. We then pray in the Spirit. We may pray in the Spirit. And then we may ask different requests in the Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So why don't we take a moment right now to pray for Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn. Yes. So this is part of your training to work with us in prayer. Yes. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray Two minutes. I'm going to time it. I don't want you praying more than two minutes. Those people that pray very, very, very loudly, tone it down. Those people that pray very softly, pick it up. Why? Because we want unity. We don't want individuality in corporate. We want unity. All right? So if you're praying too loud, I might just say, those people praying too loud, turn it down. Those people praying soft, pick it up, pick it up. So we can have this, this unity voice of the Spirit. Are you ready for it? So that's what we pray, Father, that you would bless Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, that he would speak boldly, that he would speak strong, he would speak clearly by the revelations that you are bringing from heaven to him, Father. And that as those revelations come and unfold in him and through him, they are touching the world and it's transforming people around him. It's changing their lives, lifting them up, causing them to flow into new places, new spaces, new opportunities, new things. Thank you, Father, that as he teaches the word, that many people will begin to share good things with him as their teacher. They will begin to show and, and reveal their love for him in many different ways, Father. Thank you for it, Lord. Now we all pray in the Spirit together, in, spirit in Jesus' together. name. Now let's pray in the Holy Ghost for two minutes. Le disto, sempre disto comprando le protese che le vanno. Le mone se mande disto brode sempre. Reba gaga so colo brocote che ti dite vi so mono cosa no. Che ma cacado to son rete re. Don't lose focus now, stay stay focused. Ramandro she crebe che se na ma. Romoni si chi va ya cosce che le brete le vato. Yes, you can amanda. Don't let your mind wander. You focus on Brother Jerry on prayers for him. Shambreso comprenda dindando de gisha. He paya o yo mandre me ne gisha cobra. Re me ne gisha mbrende ka. O pa kaya sa combre de gere ka. Romonde sembre de sembra casa na mandro mo de casa. Yes, seleka. Yes, seleka. Otro propote pele para ni. Shanas. 
Well done, church. Well done, church. Well done. You have a good church here, Pastor Justin. There's good people here that you've got to pray. Well done, church. I mean that because what you've done now, you've, you've just all come into agreement in unity to pray for the apostle of this whole ministry. Wherever he goes, whatever he does, from this moment onwards, your prayer life prepares the way for him. It prepares the way for him. Hallelujah. Glory. That's why the Lord placed it upon us. He gave it as a revelation that the more we can pray for him, the more others will get to receive from him. But certainly as our prayers work, we get more from him. Because yes. pr our prayer life opens our eyes to the revelations that he brings. Yes. And as he brings those revelations, we're open to live them because we pray for him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that applies to your pastor, Pastor Justin and Annette. If you pray for them in the same way that when all these things will come to him, that when he stands and preaches on a Sunday, you are in a completely different spiritual dimension, ready to go, ready to receive, ready to flow, ready to take in, and then ready to give back. Because that's what prayers can do, is they can give back. Even in a service, your response can give back and lift the whole meeting. Hallelujah. And you can experience more out of the meetings and give more into the meetings. So, so uh, I've asked Pastor Christy, who is to us in Whitbank, what Pastor Justin and Annette is to Brother Jerry here. She is the shepherd of the Whitbank Church. And so I've asked her to pray for us, Pastor Sharon and I, as a demonstration to you how you can pray for Justin, Pastor Justin and Annette. Come and pray. Good evening, everyone. Please pray with me, and you can see how we pray back home for Pastor John and for Pastor Sharon. Father, we just come to lift up Pastor John and Sharon tonight. And Lord, your word says in Hebrews 13, remember your leaders in authority, for it is them that is bringing you the word daily. So Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus for your pattern and your ways in your word to pray for our spiritual leaders first. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave us Pastor John and Sharon. They are a gift unto gifts. So now, Lord, we're going to lift them up tonight, and we're going to lay the tracks for what is coming for them. So, Father, we heard it again tonight. You gave us a jump start on your word for next year. So as a congregation, we are praying for Pastor John and Sharon for the new doors that you have for them, Father. We ask you, Lord, to do above and beyond their own ability and what they have already experienced. So we're going to hook up with the Holy Spirit right now. He will help us to pray the way we ought to. So in the name of Jesus, let's pray all together and say, Olomani stebele itapa, otro mendista pala toloste, liple pato, liple beso, liple candocole, en liple candashta, lo potege en secade, o lo pladisto colama, ondra patisto, ondra paketo, en ondra badisto cola blesto, le cona, le sendo, o le predistraca. Ya le goste, le goste, le goste, y la matone me, en se, en se, en se. We praise you, Father, for the more and the more that you have for Pastor John and Sharon now coming in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. This is the way we pray back home. Thank you, Pastor John. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, this is good, right? This is the way prayer meetings ought to be. Prayer meetings ought to be teach a bit, pray a bit, teach a bit, pray a bit, teach a bit, pray a bit. 
So the teaching part may or may not be more interactive or less interactive. Each congregation, each group of people must find their own flow. Like I said, we don't have a hold on any kind of pattern or any kind of doctrine about teaching. We have, through many years of working this out with the Holy Spirit, found a way that really has engaged our, our entire ministry to be prayers. We have an awesome praying church. Powerful praying church. Truly powerful praying church. Hallelujah. So, I'm going to just share the word with you for a little bit, and then we'll come back to some things about prayer. How do you suppose a spirit being communicates with another spirit being? Words. Isn't that right? So a spirit being will communicate with another spirit being through words. So if you are a physical person, you can communicate what you are looking for through words, but you can also take physical action. So how does, how does this whole work, this thing work in the spirit? I, I don't want to read all of what is in Genesis, but you can read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, that God made man in his image. And his image he made them. And what did he do for them? He said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So he said, you have dominion. How does a, a man who has the glory of God on him exercise his dominion? Through words. How did God the Father exercise the making of the universe? Through words. So once again, I feel a little bit, you know, that I, this is a bit basic, but, but it goes to the fundamental thing about prayer. It's about words. And so if you don't take your words seriously, then your words that you bring before God, you may not take seriously. So you've got to have words that you take seriously. Now, Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them or name them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So spirit being is cooperating with a divine spirit being. And the two together are actually creating and forming this, the creatures of this world. Right? How are they doing it? Words. So I know I'm talking to the converted here that when we say and we read in Hebrews chapter 11 that the worlds were framed by the word of God, then it means words are that powerful. So if you pray, you're praying what? Words. Prayer is about words. Many people want to make prayer about something else. They want to make prayer about Kneeling. They want to make prayer about closing eyes. They want to make prayer about a formal structure. They want to make prayer about many different things. In other words, they are bringing ceremonies and traditions into a thing where actually God is more interested in your interaction with Him about words. That's what He's interested in, is words. That's why you can pray like the Apostle Paul without ceasing. How does the Apostle Paul pray without ceasing? He wasn't bowing a knee every three seconds so that he could do it without ceasing. What it meant was in his communion with God, he had words. 
And, the, and in the words that God gave him in his communion, he prayed all the time. I'm getting a bit of a head myself, but because in Proverbs uh, 18 verse 20, you know the scripture well, but I'm reading it from the Amplified Classic. A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the consequence of his words he must be satisfied, whether good or evil. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it, or death or life. So, I'm going somewhere with this. The message translation says, words kill and words give life. They, they're either poison or fruit. You choose. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. Words. So if you get into a habit as a faith Christian, if you get into a habit of living in a reality because living in the intensity of words is too much to keep up as a discipline, and you take your foot off the gas and you say, I'm not going to live in the intensity of keeping my confession or my words in my heart at the level that they need to be because I'm always connecting with people that are demanding other words from me. Isn't that what happens in our life? You talk to a customer on the phone, they're demanding words from you. You talk to some people, on the, uh, you talk to family members, they're demanding words from you. And so customers' words, they, or, or, so, uh, this was a big, big deal for me when I was in the corporate world. When I was in the corporate world, I'd like to just tell you the story very quickly. I was going after a very big deal, selling big, big computers those days. Computer sales was worth millions, one sale. Giving my age away a little bit, yeah, but you know, I used to sell big computers. And, uh, and so if you lost the deal, you know, it's... 10 years before they invest in another big computer like that. And uh, so this was my customer. And uh, a political agenda had, had taken over the company. And they were wanting to get rid of me as the, as the supplier. And so they basically told me, you've lost the tender, you've lost the business. So I went to Jesus. I didn't go to my boss. I first went to Jesus. And when I went to Jesus, I had words with him. These were my words. Lord, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. I live my life for you. My gifts, my callings, and all of who I am, I have submitted to you. I have consecrated my whole life. In my marriage, in the way that I live, I've consecrated my life to you. And now, Father, these ungodly men, these heathen, are coming to take my business. And I do not accept what they say. Amen. Now I'm asking you, Father, to reveal to me how I can change this. So what I've done is I've established my platform of words and I'm praying. This is where Sharon and I are a little different. She may shed some tears. She may dance a little bit and get all feisty. I'm really focused because I need to win here. And this is the way my personality goes. Yeah. I'm after this deal, and I'm not letting it go just because somebody says I've got to walk away from it. Right. My managing director was the guy who said, walk away from it, we've lost the deal. I said, I don't even take the word of my managing director because Jesus gave me this deal to make me prosperous. Yes. So I went over to praying in the Holy Spirit because in the Holy Spirit... I can find answers that my natural man cannot find. And so I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, and the next thing God shows me on a, in the spirit realm, like on a TV screen, he shows me a man's face. And I don't know who this man is. I had to go and look him up. You know, they have all these prospectuses and boardroom reports every year, and board reports, and I had to go and find, and I saw his face, and I went to go look for him to see what his title was. When I found him, because the Lord said to me, your answer is with this man. So I did some research with the man about who he was, what he did in the company, and I went prepared to go and talk to him, and I said, so I believe you are this kind of person in the company. He said, that's correct. And I said, I believe that my competitor has put a, has put a proposal to you to solve your problems this way. He said, that is correct. I said, they cannot solve your problem. 
He said, you're making a bold statement about your competitors. I said, it's because they're my competitors. I know they can't do what they're delivering. They say they're going to deliver. He said, how sure are you about this fact? Because if this is the case, I'm going to go to my board and I'm going to ask them some hard questions. I said, sir, here's all the facts. And I gave him all the stuff he needed. And I said, here's the fact. He said, I'll be back. About three weeks later, we got called back into the, into the office, into that company, and they reissued the tender Amen. because they had to reprioritize the values that they calculated for the tender based on his need for the operations of the company. When they recalculated the tender, who got the most points? <laughs> who got the commission? Where did the double tithe go to? Yeah. The church. Because yeah. yes. at that time, Pastor Shannon and I decided we weren't going to tithe 10%. We are going to do 10% and 10%. And that's how we lived. Well, where do you get that kind of faith from? The same faith that was in me when I said, I don't take no for an answer. This is my business. When I got the business, I honored God with it. I gave it to the kingdom. Yes. Yes. You see, I, I got it in prayer. I got it with words in prayer in my personal life. And I began to understand, understand that this Christian believer has authority with words. And when this authority of words gets to working and I'm in agreement with my closest friend and spiritual partner in life, when we get into agreement with these words, there is nothing that can stop us. We have never waited more than three months in our whole lives for any delivery of anything that we have prayed for in agreement. Three months. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, I'd like you all to stand with me, please. And uh, if you all don't mind, I'm going to teach and we're going to pray for about 20 minutes more. Does that work for you? I mean, it's Halloween out there and you don't want to go out there. It's just crazy out there, right? It's just crazy out there. And uh, in any way, this is far more beneficial because this is about your future, isn't it? Right. And so we, we're leading you to teach you how to pray corporately with power, yeah. with effectiveness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man yes. avails much and the Amplified says much, makes much power available in its working. Yes. Hallelujah. We want our prayers to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you just raise your hand and praise the Lord? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you for this teaching tonight. We thank you that we have ears to hear. We thank you we have hearts ready to receive. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. We will always be able to pray with a different level of fruitfulness, power, increase. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Okay, let's press another 30 seconds. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise your mighty name, Jesus. Glory to the Most High God who leads us into triumph. Glory to God. This is our victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. And we raise up our faith with thanksgiving and with praises and with prayers in the Holy Ghost. Glory to the Most High God. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yes.
Did you notice something about this, this time that we had here? Some people clapped, but by and large, there was no clapping. That's right. This was all about words. Because this is where the power lies. It's in the words. It's in the words. And as you bring words out of your heart, it changes you. And when you change, you hear from the Father, and that then changes words and brings more words that are more specific, more accurate, more directed, more powerful. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. This is Daniel, and the angel of the Lord appears to him, and he says, Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind and heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come as a consequence of and in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. He withstood him. So words were spoken. The words released the angel out of heaven to come and answer the words. As a result of the words, there was a war in the heavens. Work with me now. How do spirits war in the heavens? With words. There was a war of words going on between the angels and the prince of Persia, which is a demonic force, preventing him from bringing words from heaven to Daniel. So the words, I can't prove this, but the words would have probably been about the justification and the rights of those angels to become messengers on behalf of God to bring those words that would reveal the future. And so was the battle of words, conflict of words, that another angel had to come and take up the words argument to release the angel that was the messenger and come and deliver words. So the war of the heavens was not with lasers <laughs> and deep speaking masks. They were a war of words. Hallelujah. The reason I'm mentioning this to you is when you have one person coming with faith to speak words, you get heard in heaven. When you get a whole bunch of people together, Jesus comes in the midst of them where two or three are gathered together in yes. my name and you are in agreement. There I am. When Jesus comes in the midst, your words have much more power than Daniel's one set of words had. It also activates forces in the spirit realm to try and counter your words. Mostly it's a they will have an attack on you to change your mind so that other words come out of your mouth. And if it's in a corporate setting, almost always it, he will try and bring confusion through strife, through differences of opinion about how prayer meetings should be run, about what the rights of the people are in the prayer meeting to pray, how should we pray? How shouldn't we pray? What should we pray? What shouldn't we? I don't agree with this doctrine, so how can I pray over that with you about that doctrine? Well, listen, I'm not in agreement with my own wife about everything in the Word of God, and we've been married 38 years. I'm almost perfect, and she's still coming, you know, <laughs> along. <laughs> I'll get it later, Brother Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> she is my awesome spiritual partner and I take everything that she says very seriously I'm having a bit of fun here but, but uh, I mean there are things that when we share the word about certain things I say babes I don't see the word that way and she will say to me I don't see the word that way there's no harm in that we can still get into agreement and pray according to the will of God as he reveals how we should pray we can't let disagreement stop us from praying about important things. 
We can't let petty doctrinal this way, that way, not this way, that how way is, um, stop us from getting all of you all in church to come and pray in the midweek. Can you imagine what will happen to this church if you all come in agreement, you get behind the pastor and, 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 and Annette, and you come and pray every week, and you're praying for Brother Jerry, you're praying for this nation, you're praying for this church, you're praying for the souls out there that are going to get saved, you're praying for the mission. Can you imagine what you can do to change this whole area? You must uh, let the cameras up here and take a picture of all these faces. And when they don't come, send them an angel <laughs> to come and haul them back to come and pray. That'll work. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to move on and I'm nearly done. I want to say that when you speak words to him, then those words that you speak to him, the best words you can speak to him are the words that he speaks about himself. That's how you become an effective prayer. You speak words to him. When you speak words about him, you should also speak words that he says about himself. If you speak words about him that are your opinion, then it can be anything. Or someone else's opinion. If you speak words for him, then you better be sure that you are in that spiritual zone where you are speaking for him. Because if you speak for him, you better know you're speaking for him. Because if you speak for him and it's not him, then whatever troubles come from that word will come back to your door. God will hold you accountable for that. And there's many scriptures I can tell you about that. But for you and me, and so I just want to say this, that most of the people that do praying in churches today pray words that are in you, that you find in you, that are not necessarily God's words, they are just words that are in you. So if I may give you an example, I might find a word in me and the word that say, Lord, I feel like going on a vacation. Why? Well, because you've been thinking about vacation. So, Lord, I think I'd like to go on a vacation. That's words you find in you. Perhaps a better way of praying is say, Lord, if it's your will, I'd like to go on a vacation. It's a small difference, but it's a huge difference. Because if you keep talking to the Lord about what words are in you, then those are the words that guide you. They also become the substance of your prayer life, which is words that are just found in you. And those are not necessarily words that are going to be guiding you. Oftentimes, people want to pray words about themselves. I don't feel so good. I don't feel like I'm a worthy Christian to do something. And I don't feel like I'm worthy to go and... Uh, uh, Witness to that person. So will you please make me worthy? So these are words that are found in you that are now about you. So if you're praying words that are found in you that are about you, you are not having very effective prayers. These prayers are not going to have power available to change. And then if you're having words for you all the time, so the words are in you, the words are about you, and the words are for you, then it all becomes about you. Whereas if you pray about him and for him and with him, then it becomes a whole level of assignment. Yes. Yes. And as you speak those words that are about him, with him, for him, to him, those words become powerful and become effective, and then he brings those words back to favor you. Hallelujah. First Peter 1 verse 23, having been born again, not as of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is, grass, is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flowers falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. 
Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. I'm going to just read it out of the Passion Translation. It, it reads very nicely. For through the eternal and living word of God you have been born again. And this seed that he planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside of you forever. For human beings are frail and temporary like grass and the glory of a man fleeting. Like blossoms of the field, the grass dries and the withers and the flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was announced to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is important because, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow evening we're going to do some, we're going to up, upscale our prayer time. We're going to get a little more intense because we're, we're going we're to teach you how the ecclesia prays. So for the most part, when Jesus talks about the church, so when he talks to Peter, and he says, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. He does not say, on this rock, I will build my body. He says, on this rock, I will build my ecclesia. And so, a lot of times when you read in the, in the, in the scriptures, most of the time the church is referred to as the ecclesia. So I'm sure you've heard teachings about Ecclesia. But if you haven't heard teachings about Ecclesia, Ecclesia was a system that was introduced by the Roman government, the, the, the Greek government, and the Greek government would meet in Athens and they would have Ecclesia. And the Ecclesia was uh, a meeting place for citizens to come. And they were appointed a council who would meet between 30 to 50 days every year in a particular group, and this council of people would come, and they would call all the citizens, and they would bring governing matters of the city and the state and the economic environment. They would bring all these things to the ecclesia, which would be the sitting council, and the sitting people of the, church, of, of the community would come, and they would have their say about how this state or city was going to get run. This was not about a group of people coming together to drink pumpkin spice coffee. You understand what I'm saying? These were people that came with a mandate to govern and rule and make decisions. So when Jesus talks about Ecclesia and he is going to work with the church in the book of Ephesians, the church is the Ecclesia. I'm just giving you a taste of what's going to come tomorrow night. Because if you understand that the Ecclesia is those that are called out from their current status, they're called out to come and sit in council and come and change the order of governing in that town. That was an ecclesia. So when the apostle Paul and when Jesus talks about, and Peter, others talk about the ecclesia, church, they talk about the ecclesia, they're talking about this whole, this was not used for no reason. They were talking about an authority of the church that is available to us. So what do we do if we say we are going to be a properly uh, mandated church? You have to have an apostle. You have to have a council. You have to have a properly mandated people that will take up their positions to come and govern. Now we go back to words. Words have power. They have power for life and they have power for, dead, for death. So when the church comes together and we bring the words that are to God, they are with God, they're about God, they're for God, then we begin to declare what must become. 
And the matters that we declare must come to pass are matters that God lays on the heart of the apostle, the pastors, the council of what we must bring to change in the spirit. Can I finish off with one example for you? In 2012, so we are, a, we are four years into being a properly mandated, properly covered, orchestrated prayer church. One Sunday morning, I got into the pulpit, and as I got in the pulpit, a prophetic anointing dropped on me. And I began to speak out, and I said, there's an event that is going to happen. So every Sunday morning in our church, we pray for our government. All of our churches, everywhere, we pray for our government. In the church, the main. This is just us. We pray for our government. It doesn't take long. It takes three to five minutes, but we pray for our government every Sunday. We also pray through the week in all the prayer connect groups. We pray for our government because we are not going to leave the governing over to the politicians. If God has called us to make a difference in the earth, then we ought to be able to pray out the will of God for the governing of the nation. So I get into the pulpit and the prophetic anointing drops on me and I begin to say there's an event that is about to happen in this nation and it has the ability to completely destabilize us and alienate us as a nation because of the severity of the event. January 2012, I said that. So we didn't know, I didn't see anything more than there was an event coming. So what did we as a church do? We started to pray. We started to put prayer into what was going to happen, that it would not destabilize our country, it would not do our currency harm, it would not stop any effective leadership and any corruption, and we started to do all kinds of praying, which we will get more into tomorrow and the weekend. We've got plenty of time. You need time to get this. And I want to encourage you, do not allow something to distract you from getting here. You got, did a good job by getting here tonight. You need to be here every time because I promise you by the end of the weekend, you will be different. Amen. You can live a life of explosive, dynamic effectiveness Amen. in your life. Anyway, so we gathered all the church people and we started to pray because we didn't know what this event was. You can go and Google it if you like. In 2012, a major event happened where we, uh, we had a whole lot of miners went on strike. And day by day, those strikers got more and more angry. They got more and more aggressive. They, they began to move in different places. And eventually, the police were called out, and it got very hot. And so the police opened fire, and there were many, many people killed. Many people killed. Well, our currency moved a little bit, but not much. There was a lot of people that had a lot to say, it, as of course you would imagine. A lot of bluster, a lot of politics, a lot of stuff going on. But no real damage was done to the, to the nation. It's the most extraordinary, extraordinary thing that ever happened. That such a major event had almost no impact on what happened in the... I mean, it, it, it was almost like one of the very militant uh, uh, parties was trying to whip it up and make it into a huge, and they just couldn't succeed. Well, because the Lord, we are a praying church, so the Lord revealed, and our job was to pray, and so we stayed a a very bad situation. So let me just explain how this worked out over the years. The man who was the CEO of the mining company at that time, he was the CEO of the mining company, very wealthy man, they were trying to hold him personally liable for the deaths of those miners. Court case after court case, political event after political, but we had prayed. At that time, we had an extremely corrupt president in our nation. He's currently been ordered by the court to stand trial for corruption. Fact. It's taken us many years and unfortunately a lot of damage to our nation but we've got there. The man who's leading the charge for rooting out all of the corruption is the CEO of the mining company that was in charge of those miners. I wonder if the devil wasn't making a play, because that man's a Christian. 
Not only is he a Christian, he's an upright man of integrity. He is a man that God has placed to bring our nation from the, from the very edge and the brink of the abyss. And he has managed to get with all world leaders, economists and everything, and he's slowly beginning to get it right and bringing it into a place where God can use it. And we've been praying for him all this time. But, uh, you know, if you just put it, we didn't see this all in 2012. But it's all unfolded in front of our eyes that when God said something's going to happen, pray. And so in, this, in our teaching that we've got, in our teaching that we have designed specially for you, we have got some readings here by Kenneth Hagin. And Kenneth Hagin accurately describes what the responsibilities of the corporate church are to pray. As does Brother Copeland. As does many others that we are in our camp, that are in in what we are going to teach. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Lord. We are not just a bunch of people that should decide whether we want to come to prayer meeting on a a given night or not. (laughs) This is very inconvenient for me because I've had a hard day. And so we've been through this. And you've got to break through that and you've got to set your mind and say, no, I am now assigned. I have a new assignment and I'm going to support my pastor and I'll support the leadership of this church and we are going to get to pray. And we are going to begin to change some things in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I close with this. For many, many years, the Lord placed the burden on my heart to activate prayer in the church. So we had two churches in two cities, and I would drive between the churches every week, and sometimes I would stop over in this region of the city, and sometimes I'd be in that region. It would would be Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Tuesday night, and I would have all these prayer meetings which I was going to backwards and forwards, stimulating prayer in the church. It was a season of hard work for me, where I was calling prayer meetings, and I was urging people to come pray, urging people to come pray urging people to come pray. And that lasted for probably, we talked about it the other day, Pastor Christy, was it eight years maybe? Yes. For eight years, I just sowed seed, sowed seed. We've got to pray. And I would put myself out there at five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning to go and pray with groups of people that would pray, to go pray. And I would drive to Whitbank and I'd be back to Johannesburg and, and we'd be praying and we'd be praying. And then, and then just like that, one day I heard a sound that Pastor Sharon was praying with some woman in my house and it, it gave me a fright. It did, because it was noisy and it was a little different to what I'd ever heard. And they were in deep groanings of the spirit. And I thought, I don't think I like this order. And the Lord spoke to me, he said, you can stop this, John, but it will stop the power of prayer in your church. Or you can permit this, and this will become the making of your church. I said, well, I'm not touching it, Lord. (laughs) So what I did was I began to talk with Pastor Sharon, and we began to find out what was happening, what were these sounds, what were these groanings, what, how did the Spirit move? So we decided to take it to the Word so that we could learn from it, so that we could understand it, so that we could flow better with it. We didn't stop it. And now it's got to a point where there are such powerful prayers that are prayed week on week that I say, thank God. Thank God. And we have lots of stories that we can tell you about answered prayer effective answered prayer. We, are tar- we, we have laser beam target prayers that we target. Praise the Lord. You can just get used to this. From today, you can become a very significant partner with God. A very significant partner with the pastors of this church to come in prayer, join in prayer, and become very powerful 
to get things done for God in the spirit. Because you have all of the structure here. You have a properly anointed, properly ordered apostle. Brother Jerry is not just an apostle because he chose to be one. He is an apostle because God called him and his peers and his spiritual leaders that he's looked up to have announced him to be one. He is spiritually, properly ordered and orchestrated apostle of God. That's essential to be able to pray the kind of prayers that we're talking about here. The second thing you have is you have a properly submitted and ordered pastor in the church that takes instruction and leadership from the apostle of God. And there is no competition or conflict between them. There's submission and a a pure flow that happens here. And so now if you've got a leadership team and a whole group of people that are prepared to flow in the same way, you have a powerful group here that can make a lot of change. It may be, it may be that you find that this is something that God urges in you. All Christians should do this. This, should, no, this is not a special calling for some. This is everybody should do this. But some people just have an urgency to, be, to do it more fervently. If you're here tonight, I suspect that's already happened to you. How about you do something that uh, will cause you to put a uh, steel in your backbone? Hey, why don't you make a four-day consecration? A four-day consecration. And say, I'm going to come to every prayer meeting for the rest of this prayer council, this prayer group. Four days. Make a prayer of consecration. And see what God will do with you when you, how much he will multiply into your life. How about it? Do you think you can do that? I don't want to coerce you into doing something that you don't want to do. So if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You know, but this is, a, this is a worthwhile thing to do. Your pastors have found it necessary to call this meeting so that the church can go to a higher level. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful to them, and they're doing so well, and you guys are doing so well. So won't you stand with me, please? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, your words matter. So if you don't want to pray these words, then don't pray them. But if you are praying these words, then these words matter. And then you need to stick with it. Amen? Amen. So this is a prayer that is a proper biblical prayer of consecration, a prayer of commitment. So let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I declare declare from this night night to the end of the conference, I consecrate my time, my my focus, my my energy, energy. and I take all distractions and put them behind me. And I ask you for your wisdom to deal with all of the activities that happen around me so that I can get you for every prayer meeting. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Do you understand what's just happened? That you've not only prayed personally, but you've prayed corporately. And you've activated a powerful corporate prayer of unity to be together. Now, if you really want to take this to the next level, you start to affirm your prayer life with someone else before you leave. You say, I am a prayer. I am an effective corporate prayer. And I've prayed my first corporate prayer of consecration. And I'm going to stick with it because this is God's way for me. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. So tomorrow night you'll get a lot more of Pastor Sharon's fire. And on Saturday you'll get a lot more of her fire. But you'll also get some of my tempered approach. And we flow just great together. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming. Well, let me, let me just pray.
Do you want to pray over? You pray over them, Pastor Justin. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. Amen. Give them a hand. You received that tonight? Hallelujah. What an awesome time. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have been in, this, this uh, revelation, this, this experiencing you, this experiencing corporate prayer. I thank you that you are in this, that you are here. I thank you that this is going to change us as individuals, and this is going to change us as a church, and it's going to change this entire region. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Pastor John and Pastor Sharon, Lord. And we, we will continue to draw on the gift that's on the inside of them for such a time as this. Our hearts are open. Our spirit is willing. And I thank you, Father, that you're taking us to another level. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you guys. You know what? And we will see you tomorrow night at 6.55. We're going to start sharply at 7. Amen. You're dismissed.